Welcome yet again to another edition of the African Sports Show. We are here at Amharit. I am your host, Ali Mbou. We are here to bring you a detailed analysis of another African game that is Ghana versus Uruguay in their final group stage of the of the World Cup competition. So thank you for joining us. We'll be giving, we'll be giving a detailed analysis with my guest in the studio who has just arrived. We'll discuss and give a detailed analysis of how the how what are the chances of Ghana progressing to the next stage. They need a win to proceed to the next round of the competition. So stay with us. Welcome on board Mohamed. Thank you very much for joining us again. You, you've been a friend, of course, as far as the sports, um, African sport is concerned. Yes, and the, um, can you introduce yourself? Can you, you're welcome to the show. Yes, um, Mr. Mbuk, thank you. Thank you for having me here once again. I am glad to be back here in Africa in sports. Uh, this is one of my um, favorite sports programs. And uh, to analyze um, this game, uh, Ghana versus Uruguay, which I am hopeful is going to be an interesting encounter. And then here, I, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much once again, Mohammed. Um, it is um, Ghana and Uruguay. It is. It has a lot of. They have a lot of history. Looking at 2010, what happened between them? Certainly. So it is something that Ghanaians are been waiting for. Will it be a pay bad time, or will it um, be Uruguay again? So what are your thoughts about the game? Well, indeed, like um, like you said, um, Ghana versus Uruguay um, has um, an ugly history. Um, when you are looking at uh, it from the Ghanaian perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Luis Suarez, for instance, would be in the center stage of that discussion. Very well. Um, but coming to the game today, I think this is going to be an important game. Um, Ghana needing a single point um, to qualify, and Uruguay knows um, that um, if they are to qualify for the next uh, level of the 2022 finals of the World Cup, they'll have to come out uh, with, with all. Uh, they'll have to come all out and then to win and then um, have all those three points. So I think um, it's going to be an, uh, a good encounter. When you look at um, the Ghanaian team, they are full of superstars. Uruguay who has one of the best four lines in this uh, World Cup tournament. Yeah. So I think it's going to be interesting. It is going to be very interesting, like you said. Ghana need, need to put in a very respectable performance to to upset the Uruguayan side that are very organized. Ghana just need a point a point to qualify it to the next um, round of sixteen. That is round of sixteen. Well, how do you see Ghana today? Do you think that morally they will be there? Um, yes, I think um, it's, it's not going to be a straightforward win for Ghana. Um, they will have to play and then uh, they will have to play a disciplined game. And I think um, on the Ghanaian side, there's an added pressure. Um, yeah. talk, they, like, we talk, uh, talk of the history they have with Uruguay, with Uruguay. Uh, dating back to 2010. Um, so to me, I'm looking at Ghana as uh, playing two games here. There's yeah. a mental battle, a mental game with, Ghana, uh, with Uruguay, mm -hmm. and then the physical aspect of the game today. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at this Ghanaian team, I'm the likes of Andre Ayu, who has been there um, since that, uh, that, 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 that era. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so he is that well experienced. Um, looking at their midfield, um, you will come to see um, Thomas Pate playing for Arsenal, mm -hmm. um, uh, Amate playing for Leicester City. So they have that wealth of experience. That big man players, yeah. Also combined with um, some young stars, um, we've seen the likes of Mohamed Kudus, who yeah. has been exceptional uh, in his career. So I think uh, generally they are going to do it. But then Uruguay too, on the other hand, have, uh, they have superstars. Very big superstars. Um, one of their players, uh, one of their midfield players, for instance, that plays for Real Madrid. Valverde? Valverde, yeah. he's, I'm a fan of that. He runs like no man's man. He's, so, he's very good. He has the energy. I think he's going to be the biggest headache of Ghana in this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And they need to be very, very much disciplined. Like I said, if they, if they want to win, they must follow the momentum on their last game with uh, the South Koreans. Yeah, yeah. They did a very good game. They did a very, very big uh, performance yeah. in winning the South um, Korean. And, I think if they put in that respectful performance against the Uruguayan, they, 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 they will have a point. They have a chance of winning. winning. So, um, Ghana or Uruguay? Um, well, I would like to say I want Ghana to win. Yeah. But realistically, uh, when, I, when I look at this game, before I can go on, I'll be my prediction like um, the previous years. And I think I've been lucky to have uh, good scores when it comes yeah. to the prediction. But then, I'm looking at this game here, first, uh, before I tell you my prediction. Um, when you look at this Ghanaian team, uh, I've seen a weak link um, yeah. from their midfield six to their defense line. Very well. Um, even though Pate and then um, Amate are those uh, that experienced uh, players, yeah. players mm -hmm. but then their speed will catch up to them. Absolutely. They, they have they, they have fast runners uh, who are very good with the ball. Mm -hmm. so I think it's going to go against them. Uh, very well. Gonna, that is going to go against Ghana. So Absolutely. I would go with uh, the best results for Ghana, uh, a draw. I think that is enough for Ghana to win um, the the 
the, 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 the next competition, they qualify for the next stage. Yeah. So a draw is very fair for Ghana because actually looking at Uruguay, they have a, they have superstars and they can they can they can do anything to upset um, yeah. the Ghanaians. Yeah. So they need to be disciplined. And to me, maybe discipline have a game plan wherein a draw would not be bad for them actually. Yes, like I, I've seen um, Luis Suarez in the lineup, so I think um, his presence will be like a better sure. battle. I'm saying. Absolutely. If they want to attack him with, with the past history they have, yeah. I think it's yeah. going to go against them. So, Again, I mean, he is that corny player that, 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 want, that to, is that right want to create um, some sparks that, that is right. and, and want to be on the headlines always. Like, just know you go so yeah, yeah, yeah. on the headlines. And actually, um, let's see what is going to happen. I'm going for Ghana myself too. That was a very brief and very, very honest analysis from our guest from the studios tonight, um, that is Mohammed. Yeah. Um, it was very, very good and honest, actually. Ghana need to step up and be disciplined from the back and have a game plan that is going to suit them. That is a point, like you said, is enough for them to proceed to this last 16. So uh, until we come here, we're going to have to see what, we'll have, what the Black Stars will have um, for us as far as Africa is concerned. So thank you for joining us. So we'll join you in the second half of um, analysis. <laughs>
and, and, and he's the one that, that struck the yeah, first ball. And, so and, and, and Suarez, Suarez has impacted. I think when you look at his age and then he's at look at his age. That one, yeah. but his experience, yes. um, he's able to create space for a lot of them. Uh, for, for the, if you look at the Uruguay yeah, side, they, they have that have Nunes the, in the attack. They have Valverde. They have a lot of quality. And don't forget Cavani is also on the bench. So I, they can always turn the absolutely. game around. Absolutely. So yeah, that is it. In the second half, for if I we are in the suit of the Uruguay and quote, and um, it's just to have that killer goal. Yeah. Look for the third goal, and the game is as good as finished. Mm -hmm. But Ghana must be conscious of they should have the next goal in the second half. That's the only way back. Goals for Ghana or they not going out because actually um they need the goals. A draw is enough for Ghana, like we said. In the, in the pre game analysis, if that actually, um, do you see any any energy that the Galatasaray team have from this first half to score to score this um well organized Uruguayan side? Um, yes, they, they they have that energy, but I mean, they have to, I think they will still have to use make use of that energy. Absolutely, they must have, they must use that energy. And then the attackers should be there to capitalize. Whatever the first chance they have, they should capitalize. Cruz is that good? Yeah, Cruz is very good. They should, they should, they should uh, work on having him closer to the 18, 18, 18. Very well. They're, I think they're very far from the 18 yard box. He's not the kind of player that can shoot out of the uh, like out of range distance. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Valverde has that quality yeah. for Uruguay. So I think what they can do is that. To, Build up from the midfield and then have the patience of mm -hmm. playing there, and then eventually the chances will open up. Absolutely, and they should capitalize. They should capitalize. Okay, again. Ghana have a still have still have a chance. It's not all over until it is over, and they only need a draw to proceed into the second round. That is a round of sixteen. We've seen Senegal made it. Sure. We've seen Morocco, um, that is the North Africans, making it. So why not Ghana? We need at least three or four representatives, uh, representatives of South Africa is concerned. We want to be rep well represented in that uh, round of 16. Uh, hopefully so we are putting all our hands in, we are putting all our, um, our hopes in Ghana, winning and at least having already three and waiting for um, uh, Cameroon to, to, to at least come up on a surprise, at least. Like, uh, to, to, to make it and, and well, be the 14th. Let, let's have our fingers crossed and, <laughs> and hopefully they can, they can do a good job. Time here at Amharit where we witnessed Ghana who lost two to Uruguay and we hoped Ghana will come back to score to have at least have a draw to be able to make it to the second round. So until we come here with after the second half to at least see what Ghana can do. Thank you very much for having me. It was your host Ali Mbub and of course my guest Mr. Mohamed, yeah, thank, thank you for having you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
Andre Ayu for Ghana. Yeah. I think this is one can say this is their last World Cup. That they're all over them. Um, all over. Their age yeah. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's too sad for them uh, as professionals uh, to go at this stage. And yeah. Then, um, Absolutely. They all go out and then to play for their countries and to make them proud. Absolutely. But, and I think like what we said, Ghana I think has uh, upped their game. Very well. Even though they uh, they couldn't have that desired result. But Absolutely. But in the second half, we've seen that especially in the last quarter of the game, they yeah. were able to up their game. Very well. Um, they did very the well. Intensity. Mm -hmm. I think the changes to contribute. Very that. well. Yeah. So the coach did very well because um, if you look at in the fourth second half, he, he took off two changes. Uh, yeah. Two two yeah. two people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the Ayu brothers. brothers were all out, and that uh, at least lifted the boy's spirit. Sure. Because already looking at um, him losing the penalty, his morals were down already, and all that. So I think the coach cool tactically played a very important um, role there in making um, that quick changes to at least have the energies back again in the team. In the game, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think like um, like how it happened in 2010, um, mm -hmm. Ghana lost uh, a penalty yeah. and Ghana lost the match. The match. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that is an interesting encounter. So, but then, and when I look at this Ghanaian team, okay, it is all over for them in these finals, yeah. the World Cup finals yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But then going forward. I'm looking at players like uh, a young Tarik, team, Lamte, a young uh, team, Mohamed Kudus. These are very young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think when the when the when I, I'm not sure because now normally when things like this happen, mm -hmm. uh, technically the coach's job is always not secure. Very well. But mm -hmm. Moving forward, um, I'm looking at the Ghanaian team that uh, in the next five years, um, they are very towards the next world. They are very they big game to be watched. Big, big team to be watched. Yeah. Watch, yeah. But not not very bad for the African continent. Actually, we already have um the. Not Africans registered yeah, in um, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a round of uh, 16 ticket, mm -hmm. and of course, the Traga Lions of Senegal who are going to meet, yeah, of course, the, the, the three lions <laughs> of three lions. England. That's the final it is going to be very, very yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. calm, um, last 16 and game that is going to be on Sunday, mm -hmm. and it is it is going to be very, very tough for the Traga Lions. But do you think that they can survive the? The, um, the, the three lines. Yes, yeah, I think they, they have that uh, capacity to, to match the English. Um, uh, and then most of their players, in fact, uh, are already playing in, in, that, the, English, yeah, in the, the English, English league. Yeah. league. Mm -hmm. So they have that experience and then um, ex exposure in, to them. But well. they, they can match them. They will have to they will have to play their A game. Absolutely. The English team is uh, that dynamic team. Mm -hmm. It has a uh, very, it's, very it's sharp attack. Like their, their, their golden generation uh, that we had then. Yeah, very well. well. When you look at this team, that the English, uh, this English team is mm. also powerful. It mm. has those, those brilliant young players. Uh, when you look at the likes of Bellingham, yeah. look at the likes of Phil Foden. Yeah. Um, very young. Yeah. Mm. Is still that experience, but relatively still young for very footballing well. age. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Harry Kane is one of the best drivers yeah. you can have. Absolutely. So it's going to be a tough game for Senegal. It's but been looking at the Triangle Lions, they have a very big history in winning big games, big, big games big and games. big teams. Yeah. In big 2002, games. when they had to. We'll have that popular with fans. Yeah, sure. So, so prospects are still high and hopes are very high that the Senegalese can upset the they, English team. They they can they can upset the English team and they they have to play at their A games and then um that discipline has to be there. And well. They have to be composed to play. But generally, when you look at the Senegalese team, they have that their physicality. They can match the English on one on one. Absolutely. Um, technically, when you look at their midfield, they have one of the. The, the best midfield com composition. Uh, and looking at the, Africa, looking so at like you said, the top players playing in the in the same yes, competition with them. Kalin Kulwali, Ghana Gay, and of course players. the the goalkeeper that is um, Mendy. Mendy knows almost of the strikers Mendy. in the Premier League. Definitely. So actually, it's not going to be something very difficult for the Feng uh, for the Senegalese side. We put in our hopes on them to proceed to the to the um, last eight. And I would also like to think Morocco is doing the same thing. The North Africans, the North Africans, they 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 are doing very well. They, I sure. think the, for them they the best. Yes. As far as African representation yeah, is concerned, they, because they, they're very consistent, they play as a team, and they enjoy what they're doing. They, they and I think they will pay dividend. It, it will, it will. Um, when you look at their team, they're a very tactical team. Actually. I mean, North Africans generally have that ability. I mean, Egypt had that history, um, Algeria, Tunisia, yeah. they can always play that. So when they are playing to their own pace, and then um, that unity is there, yeah. uh, they can they can go for it. They've done that against Belgium. Yeah. Belgium is one of the best, in fact, is the... Second best team in the world, um, it is ranked second. But, best but they, they have a problem. Uh, they have a problem because if you look at Belgium, to me they were supposed to go out of the last in the first round. But, yes. but they have. Do you think there is some internal issue in the Belgium side uh, that led to their yes. lost Fo it all? Fo fo football, football is so sensitive to most of these things. They, Absolutely. When you individually they have one of the best players, attackers and defenders. Uh, like when the last time I think I've seen a quote on uh, Kevin De Bruyne yeah. saying complaining that the. The team is aging and that has been a problem. So and I think that have led to having a problem in the camp. The, the yeah. coach has already stepped down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Madness, you have to go. Looking at having all those top class players and you can manage them to proceed to a 
first round, a second round to, of, of a World Cup, oh, that, I think that's a big setback for him. And he, yeah, he's lost is, it. it, it he yeah. lost it, and these were, I think he, he's very honest to the, the side, Belgium side, and yeah, going so, off. So that, that is why I'm saying, okay, even though we, are, we, have, we still hold um, high prospects for Ghana moving forward, mm -hmm. uh, I am actually for the coach's uh, position here. Yeah, it depends. Uh, anyway, I think he was suppose he was only there as an interim coach. Yes. It depend his his progress would have depended on his performance into this into this. Uh, this deal would be a very good try for him. Yeah. But yeah. looking at him, he lost it. Uh, let's see whether Ghana and if if he will give him a chance to proceed. But I think he's a very fine yeah, manager. I, th I think Ghana, yeah, uh, especially this last twelve months, they've done a great job in, yeah. in terms of their recruitment. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the likes of uh, Lamte, and these are people that they are not in the team. Absolutely. Um, William. There was not in the team, but yeah. these were people that were brought in. So I think um, going forward, um, their presence and then their the FA's ability to mobilize and then bring more young mm. people, um, Ghanaians, yeah. that are outside and on board. That that, that has been a very good. Team. That has been a very good um, thing for them. Team, sure. So um, not Africans, West Africans. Let's bet for the Indomitable Lions that who play later in the day against um, the Summer Boys, that is the Brazilians. Mm -hmm. And see whether at least there will be some magic happening there to have three Africans go to this, the, the next stage. But right. what, is your what, are you, what are your thoughts about chances of Cameroon going to proceed to the last 16? Um, Cameroon... Only one point? Only one point, yes. Yeah. But then a win, a, a huge win here can make a big difference. Uh, depending on the other games too. Yeah. But then I think Cameroon... I think they are, win, they are going, depends on the... Or the group, yeah, or the other, yeah. like, even if they win, they will still have to rely on the, the other games to, yeah. to decide to their decide fate. fate yeah. but, but, but what they can do is to concentrate on their part and then let them win the game. At least. Uh, and they can win the game. It's not an impossible task. It's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. yes. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. Brazil is that uh, one of the best teams right. uh, playing at their own pace. Yeah. I know they're going to dominate possession. Absolutely. So they should. And then like, uh, Cameroon to have the same thing, just like what Belgium faced. Mm -hmm. They have some internal F issues. Issue. You can see one of I their players. They are, they are, they are going to keep on. Yeah. So I don't know how they react to that. Yeah. Like, uh, but then, like today I've seen, okay, this has happened before. Even the time of uh, the, this coach, yeah, mm -hmm. song, mm -hmm. when he was there in his playing time, they had those issues. Absolutely. So, so generally, they, I think they have that ability to come back and they are positively. Uh, uh, hopefully they will do an upset yeah. against Brazil and then yeah. the other games can go their way and they can qualify for that. Your assessment for the African teams so far in the four rounds? I'm looking at I'm looking at the, the, their wins and losses. How do you assess them? Yeah, they mo almost all of them started um, poorly. I mean, in terms of results, yeah. but then um, we've seen them react uh, positively, positively and yeah. then uh, they are able to they have step up. good good yeah. results in the second phase and second games. Yeah. I think that will help them because um, just winning all all groups sometimes might give you the wrong perception. Absolutely. But here they know their weaknesses, um, mm -hmm. uh, their lapses that they had in the first games. The second game, they are, we were able to turn them up, and then uh, that will come there. Uh, that will go there. I think that is. I think kudos to the African coaches, and of course they, they've been done very well, and sure. they acted to their very well into their first games and step up and have good results in the in second, the second second, second, second and third games, games yeah. respectively, and that have paid dividend to to most of the African teams. Certainly. Yeah, and, and I think and this time I think we have all African coaches that these are people that are coached by their own own people, and then I think. So now that has that has to give uh, send a message yeah. to all African countries that we should believe in ourselves. Yeah. Football uh, can be diversified, but then we should still be able to incorporate our own people yeah. to lead us to victories. I, I read yesterday that. a very interesting quote from the um, um, North African coach, that is the the uh, the Moroccan coach. Okay. He said he's not representing the Arab world, but he's representing Africa. Look at that. That is that is that's a powerful message. That's a very powerful message that's because looking at um, yeah. Africa and the, uh, and we are the same. We representing he's representing Africa, and that is a very very powerful message. And I think Africans should rely on all the African teams that are in the next stage and support them at least yeah, to see sure. Africa go far to the finals. It's a very very interesting African teams representing us in Africa and. I think FIFA should should see should see how best looking at the performance that the African teams have displayed mm -hmm. in this tournament. At least should they should they be check and give more representatives to African teams. Well, yeah, I think at some point, um, someone someone should be able to fight for that. Yeah. Yeah, so, but then this uh, this should be um, a collective effort that we are all able to um, speak up to and, to and, uh, fight for that. Yeah, yeah. calf for uh, specific so leaders in in terms of that. Absolutely. Yeah, because I think when you look at football now, I mean, uh, it's so uh, inclu inclusive that okay. Yeah. Um, we have Gambians playing in very good leagues, uh, Senegalese, and then all all over Africa playing in very good leagues. And then we've seen them doing very uh, wonderfully um, in, in those games and then leagues, for instance. So, yeah, I, I think that I've busted the 
the performance of the African teams in the, in, sure, the, in this sure, World Cup because sir, you saw you have a lot of professionals playing in the professional yes. leagues and they're coming back home and they're making they make an impact into their teams. Looking at Hakim Ziyech, yeah. do you taking up the responsibility in the in the Morocco side and yeah, sure. leading this the the the, 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 the pace? Yeah, yeah. For me, I think the most interesting part would be um, the belief that uh, it it is sending back home that mm -hmm. okay we can do this and then. Um, if those players that are out there that are eligible for to play for Africa and African countries should always come back. Absolutely, and then we we should be able to have uh, to sit and then uh, have people players choosing their countries instead of just countries pursuing them. People should be proud to represent their countries. But, but I think, but I think with resources like this, but I think, I think Africa, to, Africa in general, to. and the FAs and of course the government should make sure they, they put in a very very comfortable and conducive environments wherein the players will opt to come and represent sure, their countries. Sure. But yeah. if you look at the opportunities that maybe the Western countries are giving them, the Africans are not giving them. But let, let's work on um, let's work on motivation and trying to motivate these young players come to yeah. choose their country of birth instead of going to national uh, yeah. going to play for another national team. And, and let's look at the French team; they're more of African. Are playing yeah, there. There is, look, there is, there is African no, continent in Europe. Yeah, so, so you find out that they, they, they lack the motivation maybe. This is why they're not coming back home to play. I think Africans should take sports very seriously and governments of Africa take serious of sports very seriously. Interestingly, your last thoughts about the whole issue about Africa progressing to the um, next stage, having um, already Senegal booking their, sp their place and of course um, Morocco booking their place. Um, what what are your thoughts about them progressing to the eight, the the, uh, the, the last eight? Race. Yeah. Um, yes, I think um, when you look at um, Senegal, Morocco, for me, they've done um, uh, wonderful uh, up to this stage, and then um, I can look at Senegal against um, England to say I think they have a chance. They stand a chance. They have a chance. Morocco too. Morocco too has a chance to proceed, and I think, like I said uh, once. Um, I think this year we, are, we, we can have that possibility of having for the first time an African team mm -hmm. um, breaking that barrier of uh, always um, stopping at the, the last, last 16. And then I think we can make the semis this time. Absolutely. Not just the quarterfinals, but then we can make the semis for the first time. And then hopefully from there, the journey begins there for the finals. Every other World Cup that comes our way now. Yeah, we can make it to the finals. Uh, the last word from, of course, um, Mohammed, my guest tonight in this sports, uh, African sports show of, uh, uh, coming from your way every, uh, every day as far as um, the World Cup is concerned. We we're, talk about, we're talking about details of analysis of games. And we're also talking about all the competitions that will come your way. We're talking about, we're expecting these zonals coming, of course, the biggest uh, Gambian competition that is going to come your way very soon. The, the fixtures are, are out. Yeah, and so. actually, we're, talk, we're, we're talking about, we're, we're only be talking on, sport, on football. We're talking about other, other disciplines as far as... Um, football as far as sports is concerned like you said it's africa in sports that you have so you will deal with all sports as far as um, sports is concerned and this is this was your host and of course we are here live at amharit um, restaurant the tropical kitchen where you can have your beautiful african dishes and enjoy them they are right opposite the um the uh, mosque pipeline mosque and just adjacent the pipeline mosque you can come in come in and sit comfortably get your african dish of your choice and enjoy it so thank you until we come your way again. It was your host, host Ali Mbou. And of course, to our camera lady behind the lens, and of course, Mr. Lamin, and Africa in Sports, or African and Science TV. So thank you. <laughs>